I'm here with Alex Goldenboy Mendez. He just won the Ambassador Award for Personality of the Year from Esports Business Summit. Congratulations, Alex. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's pretty cool to have an award. I'm never letting go. And uh, yeah, this is mine. No one can ever take this from me. <laughs> so this is for on-air talent that it excels um, behind the scenes and in front of the camera. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what it's for. <laughs> I know you're the ambassador, like, just completely of, ev of everything. But yeah. <laughs> so the first thing I wanted to ask you was, um, let's go to the beginning. Sure. Um, did you always want to be involved in gaming, and how did you get your start? Yeah, it was my dream. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I used to get these uh, uh, issues of EGM magazine uh, in my, my home, and I would always read. My favorite issue was the E3 issue. Um, and I would always read, you know, like all the different, uh, all the different things that would go on. And I was so like blown away and enamored by it. And I just kept saying to myself, one day I'm going to be there. And, uh, and then, you know, and then years later, right, I was able to achieve that goal. Um, and I just, you know, I kept setting new goals for myself as I kept achieving them. Uh, and gaming was just always my passion. Uh, so it's very easy when you have like just a, and you just love video games to really just pursue this because there's so much out there. There's so much. Mm -hmm. I, I never knew what I wanted to do, to be honest with you. I, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll be a journalist or, or something like that. I never really thought about what the options were. Uh, and then esports uh, came along and changed my life forever. We, you were a player first, right? Indeed, yeah, I was. I was a uh, competitive Call of Duty player, um, and, uh, and I, was a, uh, I played Halo as well competitively. What what happened with that switch? When did you make the switch to be uh, a host and commentator um, and make money doing it? Yeah, it, it happened when I was um, well. Uh, I was a I was basically uh, I was a good player, but I had a lot of commitments. I was uh, married, full time job, had to take care of a lot of things, and it just wasn't very possible to keep up with the younger generation of players that were up mm -hmm. and coming. So I was like, you know, I think maybe it's just smarter if I just take a step back and, uh, and, 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 and explore what my next option uh, could be. Um, I didn't think about esports commentary at the time. And then uh, a friend of mine from Major League Gaming, uh, Andreas Pearson, he, uh, he hit me up and he was like, hey man, um, we, have a, uh, we have a commentary position open. open. Our guy didn't make it. Uh, we would really like you know, for you to, uh, to come out and, and do this. And I was like, yeah, sure, let's make it happen. So I did it. And, um, you know, and then ever since then, I never really looked back. Was it challenging in the beginning to, kind of, to be able to see all the different strategies that are happening in front of you live and, mm. you know, call it in a way that sounds like you know what you're doing? I'm sure you did, but there, yeah. was there a learning curve? Yeah, um, there definitely was, but I, I knew the game. It was Call of Duty, so I knew that game really mm -hmm. well. And, uh, and I was very excited to get out there and show my knowledge of the game as a competitor. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really all that, uh, all that like, I want to say challenging, because it was challenging because it was a new thing. But mm -hmm. when it came down to talking about the game, I was confident. But then mm -hmm. I had to learn how to commentate the game. And that's really where, you know, I would think guys like uh, Corey Dunn, uh, my first uh, co-commentator, who really just gave me a whole new perspective on this business and, and showed me so much. And I learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. would, would he be a mentor? That's one of my questions. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I mean, I've had the benefit of working with so many incredible people in this industry, I cannot begin to list the amount of people, uh, but I've been very, very fortunate. But Corey Dunn certainly will sit at the top of the list. Chris Puckett, uh, another one. Rachel uh, Seltzer Querco, mm -hmm. who, who was the one that uh, gave me, who you know, did the, uh, the opening remarks. Mm -hmm. She's one of my dearest friends and one of the greatest ever, uh, you know, in the, like in the business. Um, and then of course, you know, my, my, my team at Character Select Agency, uh, they they've guided me through so much in, in my life and career and and I've just had again I just I, it's it's kind of mind-blowing when I put it all out there in a in a row of how many people I've worked with it kind of yeah it's that it's helped you along the yeah, way yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. amazing very fortunate so I want to talk a little bit about the industry overall so uh, what's most what's the most exciting thing about the industry to you right now from like a business perspective I think what's very exciting is that it, there's still a lot of uh, 
untapped potential. And I know everyone like will hear that and be like, oh, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. And I think that what it is right now is what we're, we're starting to see this a change in uh, in 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 esports where we're starting to to see more. Uh, more diversity in the in the approach of of content and what i mean by that is you know whether it's overwatch league running a city-based league or league of legends having a franchise mm -hmm. league PUBG doing a a you know global league right um fortnite world cups format of online competitions there, there's so much that's out there mm -hmm. um and i think that for businesses it's important to recognize that there's just so much there's there, there's a lot of value there because there's a lot of like the kids are, are they, 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 they respond to this, right? They respond mm -hmm. to, you know, non-endemics speaking to them normally, like not speaking to them like, oh, you're a cool gamer. They want to be spoken to like they're just normal consumers. And I think we're starting to see that more and more. Mm -hmm. I've had the opportunity to speak with Kellogg's and Coca-Cola, and I've, I've seen them talk about that firsthand. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, uh, it's crazy. I never even thought that'd be a possibility to have Coca-Cola and Kellogg's mm -hmm. and State Farm mm -hmm. and and you know all these other or even like having an arena here at the Luxor like it's all just seems so absurd so yeah there are arenas popping up everywhere right yeah, yeah. so where where do brands start then do they have conversations with streamers do they um, try to address the community directly or I think what, it starts what with what their goals are okay right um, you know it, uh, is their goal to to sell product is their goal to create awareness you know there are different ways you can go about doing things is the goal to just get stuff out in front of people and just have them enjoy it and then let the product speak for itself uh, there are a lot of different options that people have uh, when it comes to like building strategy and gaming and that's what I mean by it really is wide open because there's so much uh, like that you can that you can do that really will just that could just change the game completely, right? Or mm -hmm. activations that we see, like Hundred Thieves and Totinos, the things, mm -hmm. the cool things that they did, or TSM, Dr Pepper, Ninja with the with the Red Bull cans. Uh, you know, like it, there's just so much, and and I think that uh, it's just about recognizing, like, hey, we can go to the influencers, we can go to the games, we can go to the leagues, we can go to the commentators, we can go to all these different areas, and we can actually create something that speaks to the mm -hmm. to the core audience. What would you say to younger kids who want to get involved in, in the industry, but beyond, well, they might want to go pro, right? Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. you know, beyond doing something like that, uh, what kinds of opportunities do they have to kind of get involved at a young age? And like, what should their path be? There are different kinds of- um, there, there are a lot of, the cool thing about, you know, esports is that like, I don't have a degree. I don't have any formal training. I kind of just like learned it on the go. And uh, I've been very fortunate to be surrounded by people that have allowed me to learn and, and grow and, and flex my muscles and continue to like uh, elevate myself. Um, and you know, as a as a player, there's opportunity because you know there's there are different games, different titles, and I think that it all starts with content, right? If a person wants to get into the commentary game, if they want to get into the storytelling game, right? It's about developing your own content. We live in a day and age now where anyone can create anything, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need to have a degree to edit a YouTube video, right? You don't need to have a degree even to commentate. Uh, heck, you don't even need a degree to make video games in some cases. Like, it's just about like what it is you're passionate about and putting that time into learning it and honing it and dedicated to that craft. Uh, and if you're able to do that, well, I mean, you can you can accomplish quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So my last question for you is, what is your proudest career moment? Uh, you know, as of right now, I would definitely say- Is it now? Was, you don't have to say that. No. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it didn't, It didn't. at first I didn't know why, uh, if it mattered, to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, uh, being, a, being able to share my story uh, was awesome. Sharing that moment with my team and with my wife mm -hmm. was incredible, um, and it really is something I, I I never thought it would ever happen to me. You know, I I'm I was a, I grew up a very poor kid in the Bronx. I didn't have a lot growing mm -hmm. up, and uh, all I wanted to do was work in video games. That was all I wanted to do, and you know, and I said it in my acceptance speech. You know, what Will's crying. Um, <laughs> you know, I said, you know, I, I I wanted to go to E3 and I did it. I wanted to work on ES, be on ESPN and I did it. I, I, I wanted to be a professional wrestling commentator and I did it. I wanted to, you know, work, uh, you know, an arena in New York City and I did it. 
uh, I, I've had the fortune to be able to do so many great things in my life that I can't pick any one moment. So for all of it to culminate into this moment, uh, I think is the one that stands out to me the most. Well, that's amazing. Thank Congrats you. again. Thank and so um, make sure to go out to the show and have fun with your Thank friends. You. I definitely will. I definitely will. Got to go watch Lupo's speech. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank okay. You so Thanks much. so much. Thank you. Take care.